Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is a webinar about how to successfully implement uh, EVV and roll out EVV for your agency. And as the title suggests, uh, you got into uh, 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 health and human services uh, uh, and not to become IT uh, support. And uh, we have Samantha Frederick here today, uh, who is also going to be joining me and will be conducting the webinar. To start with, Let's cover, let's take a look at the agenda. Um, we're going to talk about challenges that uh, agencies face uh, when they roll out EVV. We've looked at and worked with a number of agencies and we've collected and seen the challenges uh, as, as well as uh, successful implementations of EVV and successful rollouts. Uh, we will also cover a, a plan for EVV success. And this is a set of uh, things that we've gathered from various successful implementations across our customers and uh, we'll share a a step-by-step -step guide on how to successfully implement tpp and finally some best practices things that you should do and and some pitfalls to avoid and finally we'll do a question and answer session at the end uh, by the way as uh, christine suggested feel free to uh, uh, type your questions in uh, throughout the presentation and we'll collect those and respond to those uh, accordingly Once we're done with this webinar, it's about an hour long, um, you should walk away with a better plan on how to, uh, idea of how to roll out EVV for your agency. Have some good actionable best practices that you can use. And um, one of the important things here is setting realistic expectations with your internal staff, clients, as well as uh, caregivers, and what that looks like and what, uh, what others have done to make this successful. And finally, pitfalls to avoid. Okay, um, before we get started, there are a couple of things that uh, that uh, we call this a myth versus fact or true true versus false. Let's take a look at a few things that, uh, that uh, we've heard and uh, you, we should probably clarify. Uh, we've heard uh, different people say, hey, EVV will not move forward. Well, that's not true. As far as we know, EVV is moving forward. There is a bill in Congress that is uh, going through pro the process and uh, that may change whether EVV is, uh, is mandated or not. But all of that is speculative. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this, we've heard that uh, uh, EVV might not uh, go live till 2023. Again, these are rumors and we don't know any different. Uh, the, the guidance, uh, you know, there's no additional, you know, has DHS released additional guidance? No, they haven't. And the what DHS has basically said is EVV uh, is planned for later this year. We've heard that EVV, uh, or the state would give us at least 60 day notice. I think they'll give us more time than that. Uh, but other than that, uh, DHS hasn't really released any additional guidance. Um, HHA is the only EVV solution for Minnesota providers. Well, obviously that's not true. Uh, you can choose uh, uh, from a list of different providers. Uh, the HHA solution is the 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 clock in clock out feature is free from HHA, which is what the state has paid for. But you can pay HHA to sell you a. Um, uh, 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 the agency management platform, uh, and of course, that'll cost you money. Uh, Pavilion is connected to the state aggregator. Yes, that is true. We are we've been approved by the uh, the aggregator. We've done our testing, and we're ready to send send data to the state. But uh, the state um, uh, the, obviously is not accepting any data yet. Um, but we are we are connected and ready to move forward. Cache will not support EVV in legacy platform. That is false. Uh, the legacy platforms, uh, some people uh, uh, that are still in legacy and, and don't migrate in time will still be supported. Legacy is still going to be around. Uh, so if, if you've heard that legacy is going away, that's not true. Um, uh, the, the benefits of Pavilio and the integration and some of the capabilities are far greater in Pavilio versus legacy, but legacy EVV will be supported. Rolling out EVV should be easier than rolling out a completely new platform. Uh, this is false. Uh, rolling out EVV is uh, much more laborious. Although EVV is only 20% of a, a full uh, platform like ours, 
um, when you roll out a, a, in a platform, uh, say you roll out Pavilion, you may, you may impact the 10 people that work in an office. If you have a 100-person agency, if you were to roll out EBV, not only do you affect the 10 people in the office, you also affect the 100 clients that are getting served and maybe the 110 caregivers that work with those clients. So that's over 220 people that are affected. Therefore, rolling out EBV is much, much harder and more labor intensive than just rolling out a new platform. Um, talking about rolling out platforms uh, and having done this before, I would like to introduce Samantha. Uh, Samantha Frederick, uh, she's a veteran home care leader. Uh, she's run a large agency in southern Minnesota uh, serving PCA 245 and FMS um, clients. And um, uh, she, has, she started the process of EVV evaluation and tech selection back in 2018, 2019 timeframe did a migration um, of a platform uh, and migrated to Cache and Pavilio, uh, as well as uh, made a variety of internal changes to make this uh, EVV implementation possible um, and uh, successfully rolled out EVV to clients and caregivers. Uh, Samantha, good morning and uh, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Prabha. Um, yes, as Prabha said, I've been in the human service field a very long time. Um, and actually, looking back to 2008, I worked for a small home care agency in southern Minnesota doing in-home care. And we had to clock time using a landline. So does that sound familiar to anybody? You punch in your employee ID numbers to clock your time? The pendulum swings and things do change. Uh, sometimes it's for the better, sometimes for the worse. But as agency leaders here, you all need to adapt to the changing times. So looking at my experience, both back then and now with Cache, I get to see things from both sides and having run an agency and talking to you all here today, um, there are many common struggles that people go through that we've seen. So here are just a few. One of the common challenges is the caregivers and the clients not wanting to utilize the system. Uh, they simply don't want to. There used to be a joke in the office that they would, that we would accept a time card, you know, hours written down on a cocktail napkin as their, as their time card. And of course that's a stretch, but the caregivers could jot down all the hours at the end of the two week pay period and they could fax them in. They could snail mail them, they could take a picture and email them. And this is a huge process change, having to clock in and clock out at each visit. And most folks we work with, they, they don't go into the industry to work with technology. They do what they do because they care for the people they support. And many don't have smartphones. They don't understand how to download apps. And many don't even have an email address. So the technology piece mixed with the resistance to change makes this a difficult transition. And all your office staff are human too. They also don't like change. They have processed payroll and done billing the same way for the last decade, and they don't want to learn something new. Not to mention, they have to operate in two worlds. They're using two systems, two separate processes during the rollout, and the office staff have a full-time job doing what they do every day. This feels like double the work and is stressful for them. Good workers are hard to find, and you don't want to burn them out during this transition. But the bottom line is they do truly care for their clients and caregivers and they want what's best for them. The technology is also a challenge. Trying to bite off more than you can chew and implementing the technology too quickly or without a solid plan will be disruptive to your business. Having too large of a pilot group and many unresolved issues without knowing how to solve them is also frustrating for all involved. And lastly, lack of state guidance and many unanswered questions. As Prabha said in the true and false, there are many unanswered questions and the state hasn't provided additional guidance. The timeline is one of those. We don't know when EVV is going live. How will the missed punches work? What about live-in caregivers? Do they have to use the system? Do they not? Uh, it's hard to move forward when you don't have the answers you need to feel confident. So all of these struggles result in low adoption. Many of you have started down your EVV journey, but I'm sure some of you are just at the beginning. And we've seen many agencies start this process and many have seen these challenges. Reverting back to paper. 
many of us have seen clients get frustrated, caregivers get frustrated, office staff get frustrated. And with all of the change you say, okay, why don't you just go back to paper timesheets until EVV goes live? If you've done this, you're not alone. Office staff acting as IT. The majority of you here today went into human services to work with people. Dealing with technology challenges, setting up new emails, downloading and troubleshooting apps, this was not what you had in mind. Billing delays and issues. Time entry is the start of this whole process. If that has hiccups, you worry about delayed payments and every dollar is valuable for your agency. Clients threatening to leave. As you start rolling out EVV, you might hear clients say, if you make me clock time this way, I'm gonna go find someone else. Even though all providers have to do this, you don't wanna hear your clients unhappy and threatening to leave you. And staff are overwhelmed. We've all been impacted by the worker shortage, and this isn't just caregivers, but office staff too. Staff are feeling the EVV pressure. The state hasn't mandated it, so let's wait and see. Well, rolling out EVV is not a light switch. It takes a significant amount of time and effort to get things going, so start soon. And ultimately, all of the challenges we've talked about here lead to a failed rollout. But the good news is, we're here to share the foundations of success. These are lessons learned personally and working with you guys. And these foundations consist of the people, the processes, and the tools. So first of all, the people. Don't be afraid to discuss EVV. We're in the people business, and the most important thing is communication. It's difficult to communicate when you don't know all the details and you know that things might change, but communicating about what's coming before it comes is important. As much as people don't like change, it's even worse when the change is a surprise. And set these realistic expectations ahead of time. Let them know that it may change. Empathize with them. As I'm talking to you today, I can on honestly say that I've been where you are. I understand the daily struggles as well as the change. The pressure from the state, the pressure to keep clients, to get billing out, to make sure payroll is correct, and to be sure the client is cared for. And it's important for staff and clients alike to know that you hear them. So take the time to listen. Be prepared to walk them through it. It will take you less time to walk them through the process at the start, and it will ease a lot of tension and issues down the road. When rolling out EVV, I had invited one of the caregivers to come to the office. She was a non-English speaking person and was not familiar with computers. She didn't have an email and didn't understand how to set one up. So together we got her an email, we successfully logged her into Pavilio, and we walked her through how to enter and submit her time. And she ended up being very successful. Next we're going to talk about the process. Look at the big picture. Time entry is just the start of the payroll and billing process. Changing the way the time is entered, how overtime is calculated, how payroll is generated, how the claims process through the system, how to deal with your denials, validating payments, running reports, all of these things stem from the initial time entry process. So take the time to create the documentation. Much like taking the time to assist your folks getting started with EVV, take the time up front to create good process documents, and this will save you a ton of time in the end. I'm sure many of you have experienced the, well, Joan doesn't work here anymore and we don't know how to do that step situation. So take the time to document, and yes, the processes may change, but at least you have the starting point. And for those of you who have both EVV required services and non-EVV required services, you'll need to evaluate both paths. You will we'll, uh, have to take a look at how your EVV required services process now and how your non-EVV ones do and how will this change with the requirement of EVV? How will your agency process both of those tracks? And lastly, it's a change from the way it's always been. For those of you that know me, this is one of my, my favorite things to talk about. It's kind of that running joke of, well, why do we do it that way? 
I don't know, it's the way it's always been. Well, you know, many people, once they learn how to do the process, they stop asking questions. So it's important to take a fresh look at your internal process. Why do we do things the way that we do? I heard this adage a while back and it's so fitting. A woman was preparing a ham for the holiday meal and she had cut off both ends of the ham when her husband came in and asked, why are you cutting off the ends? And she had watched her mother and her grandmother before her cut off the ends of the ham so she didn't have a good answer for him. It's just the way my mother does it, she said. So her husband went to his wife's mother and asked the same question. Why do you cut off the ends of the ham? And she gave the same reply. It's just the way my mother did it, she said. So sitting at the meal, the husband asked grandma, so grandma, I watched my wife prepare the meal and I'm curious, why do you cut off the ends of the ham? And she kind of looked at grandpa with a confused, confused look and she's, grandpa just smiled. When we first started making the ham, the pan was too small for the ham to fit. So we cut off the ends to make it fit in the pan. So folks, save the ends of your ham. When your pan changes, you need to change the process. Ask the whys and challenge the process. There's likely a better way to cook it now that the pan has changed. So speaking of changing the pan, let's discuss the tools. Having tools does not make you automated. And in fact, if used incorrectly, it will actually have the opposite effect. And you need to truly understand it and embrace it for it to be effective. EVV is just 20% of your tool set. Yes, yeah, so I have a drill, but without the anchors and the screws and the brackets and the level, my shelf wouldn't hold all of my books. It all has to work together. Integrated is better than best of breed. You can have a really great time clocking tool, but if you have to do workarounds to get the time entered into your system and to get it to work with all the rest of your processes, you're still wasting your time. Having them all connected and in one place will not only save time, but will also allow for correct calculations and general ease of use. And lastly, how much time do you spend keeping things in, in spreadsheets? You know, coming from an agency, there's take a look at all the spreadsheets that you use to process and track different things. There are so many manual things that are done um, and it can truly be an eye-opening experience to do that evaluation. So to pull all of these pieces together, you need a project plan. And we've put the vital pieces of the EVV rollout all in one place and we'll walk you through how to successfully implement EVV for your agency. There are five main areas, project setup, technology and process, pilot, validation, and rollout. We'll start with the project setup. What are your agency objectives? What's important to your agency? Do you simply want to comply with the EVV mandate, or do you want to become more efficient with your processes? You'll need to pick an internal team lead or a champion. Having a project champion is key someone willing to dig in, to learn, to troubleshoot, and will have a positive attitude around the whole implementation process. And set expectations. I know we've talked a lot about expectations, but the way that people react often comes from the expectations they have from the start. And know that there will be bumps. With any software migration or implementation, there are bumps and, and hurdles that you have to overcome, and there will be process changes and connections to other systems that have to be revised. Change is hard and software is imperfect. Technology and process. Tool selection criteria. This is a good time to talk to your team about EVV. What do you need to see from your EVV tool? Decide as an agency what you can live with and what you can't live without. For example, if all of your unit utilization is tracked in spreadsheets now, going forward, maybe this needs to be automated. Based on that criteria, you'll select your tool. And this is the criteria that your team has come up with. So when you run into those bumps, you may need to remind them, hey, we as a team agreed on this path. How can we continue to move forward? 
And lastly, we have the proof of concept. And this is where you'll complete all of your internal testing. You'll understand how the system operates. Uh, during my testing at my in my past life here, um, I created an entire village consisting of Tinkerbell and her fairy friends. And I tested out all the different service lines, added and removed caregivers, created service agreements and care deliveries, and I got a really good understanding of how the system operates. Once you have that understanding, you'll, you'll start your pilot. In your pilot, you'll select your initial group of 10 to 15 people. You'll want them to be from a variety of service lines and platforms, and you'll want these to be tech-savvy people who are willing to work with you. The goal of the pilot is to be successful. The pilot is not your testing ground. Don't try to break the system in the pilot. That's what the proof of concept is for. Train your staff, train your clients, and train your caregivers. During the pilot, you'll learn the best practices. You'll learn how to best communicate the rollout, the tips and tricks they need to know before they get started. And when I rolled this out with my last agency, we had a cover sheet where they could write down their username and password. They, there were links to the websites. There were tutorials for both the client and the caregiver. And it had the information they needed to know right at their fingertips. And of course, we modified this as we went along. During the pilot, you're going to troubleshoot. As you work through this, you'll, you'll come up with issues along the way, and it's important to work through them one by one. So you and we can help understand and fix the issues and any bugs. This will also help you create your FAQ. The FAQ is a list of commonly heard problems and questions, and this can be shared with all internal staff and modified as time goes on to address commonly asked questions and allow you to quickly resolve issues. You'll also see where there might be shortfalls in your initial training, and you can modify your training to reduce the number of questions. Then we'll move into validation. Validation is important for all of your system processing. Is the payroll correct? We know how important it is for caregivers to get paid the correct amount and on time. So validate the new payroll process and compare it to your old one. Is it what you'd expect to see? And billing. During any process change, you'll want to do some checking right out of the gate to make sure that what you're seeing is what you should be seeing. This can be done in many ways, but comparing them to the previous system or doing spot checks are just a few. And metrics and measurement. You can only manage what you measure. What metrics are important to your agency? Do you have the metrics and measurements that you need to successfully operate your business? Then we go into the rollout, the final phase of the plan. Establish your groups. They should be a set number of people and should be on a regular schedule. It works well for many customers to assign them based on the alphabet, say. So clients A through C will go during the first pay period. Clients D through F will go for the next one. Two-week cycles seem to work well for onboarding. And follow the schedule. It's there for a reason. It keeps the whole team on the same page and everyone knows what's expected. The champion will shepherd this along to make sure things stay on track and will address urgent issues as they come up to keep the schedule moving forward. And lastly, you've got maintenance. After you've done the rollout, you will have you know, software changes that take place. And how will you onboard new intakes and new caregivers? How will you communicate all of those things to office staff? You will also need a general process evaluation as these updates happen to make sure your documentation is current. So, to ensure a successful rollout, here are some best practices that you can do. As we discussed, you'll want to develop your internal FAQ. And this is very helpful for resolving the issues, uh, makes training internal staff much easier, and helps you move forward in a positive way. Evaluate your processes quickly and approve time more frequently. In the paper-based world, time is turned in after it's been worked. By entering it in real time and approving it more frequently, the usage is more accurate and you'll be less likely to overuse the units. 
use the system's ability to manage the service agreements and utilization. Pavilio will actually prevent users from clocking in when they're out of units, so let the system do its job. Slow and steady wins the race. Give people time to get into the system and get comfortable. The state has stated that they do not expect 100% compliance at go live, so take your time to onboard and do it right. Electronic visit is the key and not the verification. Yes, EVV is the mandate. However, EVV will also create agency efficiency, will streamline process, and will simplify billing and payroll. The process change is difficult at the start, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Hire extra staffing at rollout. If possible, bring in some extra hands. Your current workers are at full capacity and they were before the rollout. They all have day jobs. Hiring a dedicated worker is valuable, and you'll find that this person will likely be useful down the road to address missed punches, to answer questions, to do other projects or clean up. So there are also some pitfalls you can avoid. Sam, before you uh, jump into pitfalls, um, uh, we've got some questions that have come in. Can we pause for a moment and answer some questions? Yes, yeah, certainly. Okay, great. Um, let's uh, let's start with, uh, I've got a question here. Uh, how many uh, people are using EVV uh, uh, in Pavilion and Cache systems? Uh, the, the answer is, I don't know the number of agencies that make this up, but the, the total number of EVV users we have is seven, about 7,000. Um, and this includes caregivers and clients um, and guardians. Um, and uh, the, over the last uh, three months or so, this has uh, grown by 20%. Um, and prior to that, uh, I think it was growing much rapidly The when, uh, when the state said, uh, uh, when, when they put a pause on EVV, that um, uh, slowed things down a bit. Um, but uh, as of now, um, 7,000, there's a number of other customers that are currently in the implementation process, and we see this number sort of increase on a, on a daily basis. Uh, another question that, uh, that I have here is, um, does uh, uh, Pavilio support uh, telephony? And yes, Pavilio will support tele uh, telephony. It's under development. We haven't rolled it out yet. Um, it, while it's a, it's needed and we want to make it available, it's a lower priority just given that there's a lot of other stuff that we are working on, but it'll definitely be supported when the state rolls out uh, or, or mandates EVV. So that's, that shouldn't be a concern for anyone. Um, another question that we have is, does, if, if we have services that are, uh, both EVV and non-EVV, how does Pavilio handle that? Um, and the answer is, the, the, this is one of the things that uh, that those that are considering um, uh, a, a, the state-based system should also think about, is the, if you have non-EVV uh, non non, um, uh, EVV services, uh, the, you don't want to roll out a EVV version of time entry and a non-EVV version of time entry that's maybe paper-based, you want the time entry to be, because you may have a worker who does both services. Um, so the, the system that you choose should be able to support both and Pavilio does that. Those, those services that require EVV will be supported and will the, the GPS coordinates will be tracked and the non-EVV services will not have those uh, tracking and you can still enter time. As um, Sam pointed out, um, this is you know part of uh, part of establishing how uh, you roll out EVV. You you need to really understand what is uh, how does how does your process and your services work internally and make sure that the system matches up to how um, uh, how the processes work internally. Um, do we have another question? Is that it for right now? That's it for right now. That's it for right now. Okay. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. I'm going to flip you over to the next slide. Good questions. Feel free to keep them coming in the, in the chat there. Okay, pitfalls to avoid. So the squeaky wheel does not always get the grease. 
We've all experienced those folks who will call the office once a week, twice a week to complain about some of the same issues that they're having. And often these are program rules that you can't change and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, EVV is no different. Yes, it's required. Yes, they have to have the, their location turned on. Yes, they have to clock time. And just because they complain about it doesn't mean that the program rules are wrong that the system is flawed or that your agency practice is incorrect, so don't jump to conclusions. Onboarding too many people at one time. When selecting your groups, make sure that they're manageable for your team to work through. You'll want to be sure that you can dedicate the time, answer the questions, and troubleshoot the issues to avoid further frustration from the clients and caregivers, as well as your agency staff. Signing three-year deals. So there are other EVV vendors out there that uh, the contracts are, are three years long. Uh, make sure you read the fine print when evaluating these contracts. What if you don't like it after the first year? And free, you get what you pay for. Yes, there is a state offered EVV solution and it does meet the EVV mandate. However, like Prabha had, had alluded to at the beginning, um, this is only for punching time. If you want any other integrated features, if you want the ability to send billing, or you want to capture any non-EVV related services, there is an additional cost. So, social worker or IT support. Many of you went into human services for a reason. You're not, not tech support people. Tech support is an additional skill set. However, many of the issues you will encounter, in fact, about 80% of them, are not related to the tool itself. So it's important to gather the pertinent information when you're evaluating some of the problems and attempt to recreate the problem. And we do happen to have some tools that will help you do these things. Some agencies have used a support log sheet um, these allow you to collect the same pieces of information for each situation that arises and it increases the level of consistency with tracking as well as expediting the resolution. You'll want to gather the priority, the date, the description of the issue, what platform they were using, all of the details, who's involved, and again those steps to reproduce the issue. And there are other important questions you can ask when troubleshooting. And these will allow for faster issue resolution and less back and forth should you need to contact our support. For example, if you have a caregiver who calls and says, hey, I can't clock in. Okay, what error message are you getting? What device are they using? Are they on the app or are they on the browser? These are some, some good questions to have and things that we'll need to know to troubleshoot the issues as well. And all of these, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these will make it easier to pin down where the actual problem lies and resolve it quickly. Remember the sky is not falling. It's very easy to focus on the complaints or the issues. Even if it works successfully, 98% of the time, that last 2% will have your attention and it will make it feel like you've made a mistake. Remember that there will be bumps. After all, no software is perfect and migrations can be messy. The devices that your folks use are not managed by you. You're not working in a controlled environment where everyone has the same browser or the most recent, recent version of the app. All of these variations make it difficult to troubleshoot and you might encounter some bugs that you didn't expect. And lastly, you're, you're working with people and change is hard. There are people that don't know how to and don't care to learn how to learn to operate some of these things. Change is hard. So to sum it all up, there are a few things that will make you more successful. Understanding the EVV requirements and managing expectations. This is for you, for your clients, for your caregivers, for all involved. Make sure they understand what's expected and that you know the requirements that you need to have. Maintain good communication with all involved. Have a well-built rollout plan and a strong project champion. Remember that proof of concept is different than the pilot. 
try to break the system internally and make your pilot successful externally. Don't impact the, the clients and caregivers. Problem solve with a collaborative software partner. Some vendors will only support you via email. A collaborative software partner will work directly with you to resolve the issues. We're here to help you every step of the way. And lastly, support your team. Have patience and empathy. Change is hard and sometimes it takes a while for everyone to get on board. Thank you all for your time today and I'll turn it back over to Prabha for some question and answer. Thanks, Samantha. Uh, we have a, a few more questions that have come in um, and uh, please keep them coming. There are some really good questions. Uh, let's start with, um, there's a question here, uh, how do we get started? <laughs> Um, uh, pretty straightforward, send in a support ticket uh, via email to support at cachesoftware.com and say you're ready to get started on your EBV implementation and we will help you through it. Uh, again, I, you know, I, I implore you to start early and, um, and getting started early means that you can work through the kinks, get acclimated to it. And remember, while EVV is about the state mandate and the federal mandate for verification, there is a lot of value in just simply having an electronic visit and electronic timesheets that just makes life a whole lot better uh, for everybody and, and the accuracy of the data as well as the simplicity and uh, the streamlining will help your agency run better. So uh, even, uh, you know, waiting to the last minute uh, it doesn't really make sense. So we encourage you to do that. Also, remember to, we sent out a um, uh, uh, email uh, maybe about a month ago and said, send in uh, to uh, the, the HHA exchange support uh, the document saying that uh, you are using cache for EVV. And uh, that just ties you to um, us so that when EVV does go live, they will be expecting the data to come from us. So if you haven't done that, uh, please go ahead and do that. Uh, another question here, and, and maybe Samantha, you can answer this. This is, um, how will live-in uh, caregivers be uh, dealt with? Uh, and Samantha, you know, we've had this question from other people in the past. Uh, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I would love to. So um, actually that is one of the questions that we we don't have an answer to. And by that, I mean the federal government has indicated that live-in caregivers can be exempt from the EVV mandate. Um, however, Minnesota has the ultimate say and they have not outlined how that will work for, for those living in Minnesota. Uh, so we are waiting for further direction from Minnesota DHS on what their requirements will be. And we, we simply don't know. There is an option that they could be not required to use it and they may be required to use it. We're waiting on Minnesota for guidance. Okay. Um, uh, there's a question about, a, you know, what is the EVV timeline? Um, again, DHS has not communicated a timeline. It is still open-ended. Uh, we've, uh, basically what DHS has said is we'll give you a, We'll give you 60 day notice, uh, at least 60 day notice before we ask you to comply with the mandate. We believe it'll be longer than that. Uh, the, the, internally at CACHE, we're planning for a um, mid-summer uh, uh, rollout or, or, or mandate. Um, now, we don't have a, any indication that's right, or if that's the right timeline, but that's what we're planning for. Um, so, you know, uh, the if you if you're wondering if the state has given any guidance, no, the state has not given um, additional guidance. Um, here's another question: um, If a EVV user end user has questions, do they call Cache or do they? Uh, how do they get support? Um, and the the answer is the, the the way we have it structured right now is. If the caregiver has an issue, they call the agency and they call the agency and uh, internally uh, you should, you know, th this could be a variety of reasons, you know, they are unable to clock in and it could be because they ran out of units. It could be because, um, you know, maybe it was on the OIG list. Uh, the, and by the way, the app uh, stops you from signing in if that 
employees on the OIG list. Um, so the, the agency needs to make a determination as to whether this is a technical problem or whether it is a um, internal agency related issue that they have to deal with. And once they determine that it is uh, a technical problem, then they can um, uh, uh, Call support at uh, Cache, and we will uh, we will provide the support. Um, we've had a few agencies that have uh, approached us and said, "Hey, would you be willing to take um, uh, caregiver uh, and client questions and be our support, uh, be our tech support?" Um, and uh, this is something that we are considering. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm interested in and in, in your thoughts. We, although we've had about a handful of people ask us. Um, we've not really made a decision on that. Uh, we may offer that as an additional service where you could direct people to call us for support and then we triage the problem. And if it's an agency issue, we might send it to you. Um, this will be a, a, a add-on service. Uh, we have not done that yet. If, um, if we decide to move forward with that, uh, that would be something that we will we'll let you know. And this is, I can see the benefit for agencies to do that. Um, uh, to, to have us as, as support, but it also means that we have to ramp up to be able to take the support calls. Um, so it's a, something to keep in mind. Um, the cost, uh, there's a question about what is the cost of uh, EVV? Uh, there is no additional cost uh, for EVV. Uh, with Pavilio, you are, uh, the, your pricing includes EVV and there is no additional cost. So um, we don't charge uh, per client or per uh, user or any of that. It's, it's already included. So it, there is no additional cost to have EVV uh, um, uh, included. Um, let's see, we've got a couple of other questions there. Uh, Bill is helping me with questions here. Someone asking about will we notify them if changes are made to the mandate? Uh, so uh, the uh, you know we keep uh, uh, we are constantly watching for information from DHS as well as other sources to see if there is a change in the mandate, um, and we absolutely will keep you informed as soon as we have any news that relates to EVV, and if we feel that that's something that you should know, uh, we will. Uh, we will let you know, and we will. Uh, you'll probably see a, uh, a newsletter or a, a, um, a email coming from us, basically informing you of any changes that we learn of. Anything else, Bill, that you see? Um, uh, there was. A, I, I did see one question. Um, if uh, you know, if you have questions about EVV and want to talk to someone, you know, who should you contact? S send in a support ticket, and uh, it, it, based on the type of questions, if you just want to have a conversation, Samantha is a good person to start a conversation with from a product perspective. Um, and if it's implementation related, Christine is a good person. But send in a send in a question. Uh, if you, you send, send us a a support ticket, and we will uh, uh, make sure that we we get the right person for you to have a conversation. Looks like that's about uh, all the questions we have. Um, by the way, there is a, a, a questionnaire uh, at the end of this webinar. Uh, please uh, answer the questionnaire. Helps us improve um, the webinars that we do and, uh, and that helps you uh, run your organization better. So please help us by answering the questions. And thank you for uh, joining us today. And uh, here's 15 minutes back uh, in your day. Have a great day.